I'm sharing this life experience of mine with the internet as a public service announcement to be careful on Craigslist or any similar websites. I happen to be browsing the for sale section of Craigslist trying to find a used laptop. One listing really got my attention, some Dell touchscreen laptop for 250 bucks. It looked like it was in good shape with very few minor cosmetic imperfections. I texted the owner who introduced himself as Dave and told me I could come pick it up that same night. He offered to meet halfway somewhere so that I wouldn't have to drive all the way out to his place. I live in the countryside, so he lived a solid 10 miles away, which would equate to a 20 to 25 minute drive. Since there aren't many notable places near either of us, we agreed to meet at a 7-Eleven parking lot. I got there at the agreed upon time, which was 10 p.m. sharp. I waited around for a few minutes, then I decided I was going to give him a call. But just as I took my phone out of my pocket to call him, his name came up on my phone. He was calling me. I picked up skipping the hello and just said, Dave, what's going on? There was a loud background noise on his end, maybe from his driving. There was an initial moment of silence before he started talking. He said he wouldn't be able to make it all the way to 7-Eleven because his car was making weird noises and he didn't want to go too far from home. So he pulled over to the side of the road off some side street. But when we say side streets out here, we don't mean side streets surrounded by buildings or houses. Side streets out here usually mean roads with no street lights and surrounded by forest or farms. He gave some bizarre description of where he was. There was no way I'd be able to find it ordinarily, so I had him send me his location through his phone. He really was just parked on the side of some side road somewhere. I really didn't know if I was comfortable going at this point. It seemed way too suspicious. I'd heard all about those Craigslist horror stories before, and this seemed like the cliche build-up to one. Against my better judgment, I started driving over to Dave's location anyway. About five minutes of driving later on some completely pitch black road, I eventually saw the reflection of someone's taillights parked on the side of the road. So it had to be him. I pulled up behind the car on the grass next to a large cornfield but kept the car running. I turned my headlights off for a second and it literally became blackness in every possible direction. So I turned the headlights back on. Weird though, I didn't see any light from his car not even the light from a phone. I called him again. He picked up on the first ring and said he had to run into the crops to take a quick piss and to just get into his car so that when he gets back he could quickly show me his laptop. He hung up before I could even get my response in. This was too weird for me. I really didn't know what to do. I guess I figured I'd step out of the car and just wait behind the door for this Dave person to come out. He said he went into the crops, so I kept my eyes on the right side of the road by the crops. What a strange place to have any kind of exchange other than a drug deal. It didn't seem right at all. I stood right by my car door for the longest time, easily two or three minutes. There was no way he was peeing for that long. It was starting to seem like it was time to go. I'd give him another 30 seconds, I figured. In the final moments of my waning patience standing there, I thought I heard brushing around coming from the crops. I kept doing double takes from one side of the crops to the other. Dave? I yelled. The brushing sounds in the crops faded away, but a crackling leaf or two from behind my car made me turn to see someone sneaking up on me from behind my car. Exactly what I feared would happen, but that didn't make it any less horrific as I jumped into my car and floored it before the door was even fully shut. I literally loved myself for thinking to leave the car running. If I had turned it off, I may not have escaped in time. Deep down, I kind of knew the situation was far too suspicious to be real. But really, do any of us ever expect things like this to happen? These things are only supposed to happen in horror movies. You're not actually supposed to experience them for yourself. I guess it just remains a story to tell friends and family for years to come.